It's noon Wednesday, April 23rd here in Korea. Thanks for tuning in. Live from Seoul, I'm Oh Jin Ju. Good to have you with us. I'm Mark Broom. It's been slightly over one week since the Sewol Ho ferry capsized in waters of southwestern Korea. The death toll from Korea's worst maritime disaster in more than two decades now stands at 150, and the number is rising fast. So far, there has been no news of survivors with more than 150 people still missing. For the latest, we go live to our Hwang Seung-hee and Ji myung standing by at Pingmukang Harbor, the nearest port from the accident site. Seung-hee, fill us in on the latest. Guys, we are now on to our eighth day of search and rescue operations, but not a single survivor has been found since the day the ferry capsized. But the confirmed death toll continues to rise by the hour. Now, most of the bodies that have been found today have not been identified yet, but many of them are believed to be high school students. And still, some 150 people remain missing inside the sunken ship, but most of them also, nearly 90 percent of them, are believed to be students from Tanwan High School. That's right, and divers are working on the third and fourth floors of the sunken vessel, where most of the passengers are believed to have been at the time of the sinking. This is where most of the victims were found so far. With the help of five guide ropes, divers are going up and down in the dim hope of finding any possible survivors. Divers only have 20 minutes once they go into the water, five minutes to go down, 10 minutes for search operations, and five minutes to come back up to the surface. Right. Underwater drones have also been deployed to search inside the ferry's body. Today, uh, around 200 uh, rescue boats, uh, 34 aircraft, and some 550 rescue personnel will be taking part in the rescue operations. And the families camping out here at the Pengmokan Harbor are clinging onto their last bits of hope. But the situation here is not getting better. Families burst out in tears as they saw their loved ones' names become listed on the missing list, crying out in great pain and sorrow. Many are just sitting by the water with blank faces, and one mother was wailing out to the open sea, telling her child to come back. Family representatives and uh, family representatives and five government agencies have agreed to set up a temporary funeral mortuaries here at the harbor, and the funeral services will begin today. This was Hwang Sang-hee and Ji Myung-gil reporting from Pengmukang Harbor. It's been a devastating and torturous week for the families of the missing with nothing they could do but just wait for any news of their sons and daughters who were on board the ill-fated ferry. They're growing increasingly angry as details continue to emerge about the sinking and the failing rescue operation. The families have been staying at a gymnasium near the accident site in Jindo, where our Hwang Jie joins us live. Jie, how are the families doing? Guys, families here are now nearing complete exhaustion, both physically and mentally, with no news of more survivors after a week of waiting. Many families are helplessly looking at a television screen showing a list of descriptions of, new, of the newly discovered bodies. And it's just, it's just so painful to just watch them look at the screen. Some rushed out of the Jindo Gymnasium after they confirmed a newly discovered body is their own child. Frustrations have boiled over yet again with the families saying descriptions of the newly discovered bodies were not detailed enough, slowing the procedure of identifying the bodies. A Coast Guard official promised the families at the podium this morning that authorities will do their best to give precise information. He went on to explain the characteristics of the unidentified and the whole gymnasium fell silent with families watching the screen showing the list of descriptions. There are now 23 bodies that have not been sent back home. Guys. Mm -hmm. And it's truly heartbreaking to see how the families are coping there and trying to offer them some sort of comfort and support. Volunteers from across the nation are gathering to this auditorium. Tell us about them. Right, Tinju. Uh, while the whole country is hopefully waiting for news of more survivors, hundreds of volunteer workers gathered here at the Jindo Gymnasium to support Support the families here and also encourage them to stay strong. 
I'm also a parent. I don't know how much these supplies can heal the sorrow of the families, but since they're sent from across the nation, I'm working day and night to distribute them to the families, hoping that they will provide comfort for them at least a little. I came here today to support the families here, and because there were already so many volunteer workers, I feel bad that I can't help them more. There are now fewer and fewer relatives of the victims staying at the gymnasium now as more bodies are being discovered and identified. The families are leaving to tend to their loved ones. The families that are still here, however, are clinging on to hope that survivors will be found. There are notes at the entrance of the gymnasium, and one of them reads, Come back soon, honey, so we can have dinner together. Families of the missing have not given up. This has been Huang Jie reporting live from the Jindou Gymnasium. A memorial service is taking place today in Ansan, the city touched the most by this tragedy. A temporary group memorial altar has been set up there to pay tribute to the young victims from Danwon High School. We have our Connie Kim joining us live from the Ansan Olympic Memorial Hall where the altar has been set up. Connie? Hi, hi guys. I'm currently standing by at the Ansan Olympic Memorial Hall, which is about five minutes away from Tanon High School. Now, earlier in the morning, a joint memorial altar has been set up for the deceased Tanon High School students, and many have lined up to pay their last respects, all breaking out into tears. Now, this now the task now the task force team of the Gyeonggi Education Province has set up this temporary uh, altar for the deceased Tanon High School students, as they weren't able to arrange a group funeral. Funeral for them. Now, on this day, many of the Ansan citizens and volunteers have gathered together to lend a helping hand. We think people from all over the world will come here today. About 100 volunteers are here to support the families of the victims. We are going to distribute food, drinks, and assist mourners. As the families of the victims wish to hold the memorial altar for all of those who have passed, it will be set up at the Hwarang Recreation Park next week. Meanwhile, 25 of the deceased are scheduled to be released to their families this morning from hospitals and funeral halls in the city. Although all the funeral halls are at capacity with bodies being retrieved from the waters of Chindo Island, the Central Disaster and Safety Countermeasures Headquarters plans to make more space available in other locations in this Ansan district. Extremely sad and our hearts go out to all the victims and their families at this really hard time. And for the survivors, we hear some of the students have been discharged from hospital and others will be discharged shortly. Right. Originally, 80 to 90 percent of the student survivors that have received medical treatment in Korea University Ansan Hospital were said to be discharged depending on their mental and physical stability. However, according to a press briefing this morning, none of them have been confirmed to be discharged as of now. Now, they will continue to receive counseling and medication if needed. Tanon High School, which was temporarily closed, will reopen Thursday for students that were not on board the Seoro ferry, while survivors still receiving treatment may take classes and counseling in the hospital. This has been Connie Kim reporting live from Ansan Olympic Memorial Hall. A total of 14 teachers from Danwon High School were on the ill-fated trip to Jeju when the Seoul Ho ferry sank. Three teachers were rescued, while 11 remain unaccounted for. And one of those who didn't make it is a teacher who, until the end, was more concerned about her students than herself. Connie Lee has the story. In the last desperate moments before the ship was going down, a daughter texts her mother, Mom, the ship is sinking. In shock and in confusion, the mother calls her daughter, Chun Su Young, right away. <laughs> To her boyfriend, Suyong texts him that there are no life vests. I'm sorry. The boyfriend calls her immediately, but they hang up after 12 seconds on the line. Suyong tells him that she needs to call her students' parents. I'm 
학부모 연락하고 애들 챙겨야 된다고 그러더니 끝난 거예요. Her last words to her boyfriend, I love you and thank you. It was s u y o u n g s second year as a homeroom teacher at t a n w o n High School. And as for the school's yearly field trip, this one to Jeju Island on the s e o u l h o Ferry was her first. Her room remains untouched since the day she left for the ill-fated trip. Her bike, too, remains parked, waiting for s u y o u n g to return. Apparently, her grandmother is also waiting for her granddaughter to come home safely. 지금도 그 할머니는 우리 저 딸이 살아 있는 줄 아세요? 배 속에 배 속에 들어 있어서 안전하다고 그러시거든요. 계속 그렇게 믿고 계세요. But as much as there is sadness over the loss, her mother is also proud of her daughter, who put the lives of her students before her own. Connie Lee. Arirang News. One week has passed since the ferry sinking, and no additional survivors have turned up. Only bodies. The public is nevertheless showing its support, keeping hope alive, and a yellow ribbon movement in the online community is symbolizing that hope and sending out a message: We are still here waiting. p a u l i reports. This simple image of a yellow ribbon bow has become a symbol of hope in the wake of one of Korea's deadliest maritime disasters. Its message of one small movement that can lead to big miracles has resonated with people across the nation. The yellow ribbon campaign of hope was first started by a university student club, urging people to unite in their support for those affected by the tragic accident. It began as a logo being distributed as a Kakao Talk wallpaper, but it spread to other aspects of everyday life that we can see, like tying a yellow ribbon or string on your backpack. Keeping them in your thoughts is also good. The yellow ribbon campaign has spread online across social networking services such as Kakao Talk, Twitter, and Facebook, with international celebrities and professional athletes. Also joining in to express their support for the victims. Meanwhile, the story of Park Ji Young, a 22-year-old crew member, has deeply moved the country. According to survivors, Park had refused to take a life jacket and instead kept trying to save passengers till the very end. Her body was one of the first to be recovered from the wrecked ship. An online petition has now attracted tens of thousands of signatures, calling for the government to designate her as a martyr. Once legally recognized for her sacrifice, Park's family will receive financial compensation and benefits, while her body may be buried in the national cemetery. Certificates issued by hospital-level medical institutions or police records to prove her actions are most important. In addition, identification documents from fire departments and other authorities are also required. The health ministry says once it receives a formal application for Park. Officials will promptly examine her case for review. Paul Yi, Arirang News. As the death toll rises by the hour now, anger and frustration is growing as the families of the victims and the missing demand to know why the captain and some of the crew fled the ship and failed to follow their responsibilities to look after their passengers. The one man with some of the biggest questions to answer is the captain of s e o r o Investigators are looking into charging him with murder by omission. For more on this, we connect live to our Kwon s o a at the News Center. s o a give us the details. Good afternoon, guys. Now, as you probably remember, murderous was how President Park Geun-hye described the actions of the captain Lee j u n s o k and the crew members. And now, investigators are examining whether the captain could be charged with homicide by omission, which can be pressed in the case of death caused caused by inaction by the defendant. The joint investigation of prosecutors and police, as well as the Justice Ministry, said on Tuesday they will inspect the legal principles. Captain E is. Is currently charged with five offenses. They include negligence and violating ship crew law, which requires the crew to remain on the vessel until all passengers escape. To be charged with murder by omission, it will have to be determined that E was willfully negligent, meaning that although he didn't intend to kill the passengers, he didn't care whether they lived or died. 
And so uh, the operator of the Sewol Ho ferry has some very serious questions to answer too. It's been probed extremely carefully under suspicion a number of illegal actions and activities were going on. Yes, Mark. Uh, we learned a few hours ago that prosecutors have started carrying out search and seizures on at least 10 locations related to Yu Byung-an, the former chairman of the operator's parent firm, uh, which include his home and a church he founded. Now, financial watchdogs have been looking into possible illegal foreign exchange trading and tax evasion. The National Tax Service launched a special probe Tuesday into four firms that are closely related to the ferry's operator. Tonghae Jin Marine Company and imposed travel bans on 30 personnel related to the operator. The Yu family was banned from traveling this past Sunday. The family reportedly has around $240 million worth of assets. Yu was said to have established 13 overseas corporate branches and used them to snowball the family's assets. Mm -hmm. And so uh, uh, considering evidence and information that have come to light over the past week, we can not say this tragic accident is something that could have been avoided. But could you give us a recap on the possible factors that caused the sinking? Sure, Chinju. While a submerged rock was thought to have been the cause of the sinking in the early investigation stages, now we've got a clearer image of what happened. Renovations of the Seolho ferry that was purchased from a Japanese company could have been the first cause, making it much heavier than before. Fast speed upon departure due to a delay and the much discussed overveering of the ship were seen as the main cause of the sinking. In addition, ignoring safety guidelines was an issue too. Opposition lawmaker Kim Young nook released new inspection data Tuesday uh, that said the ferry was overloaded with three times more cargo than it should have been. Now that's all I have for now, but I'll be back with more updates in our later newscast. Now another piece has been added to the puzzle that may have caused the Seoul Ho ferry to capsize one week ago today. Local media are reporting that there may have been a problem with the steering gear of the Seoul ferry at the time of the accident. Park ji has the details. This is a repair request form submitted by the crew of the Seoul ferry to ferry operator Chang Hyejin Marine Company about two weeks before the tragic accident. It says the steering gear of the now sunken ferry was sending no voltage warnings. Crew members said they had to reset the power and rely on an onboard power supply while they were waiting for power to be restored. The request form added the fundamental cause of the issue was unknown. However, the ferry operator took no action on the issue. Korean broadcaster YTN reported Wednesday that a ship repair company that had worked on the Seoul Ho ferry before said it had not repaired the steering gear of the Seoul Ho ferry any time recently, nor had it received any repair requests about the steering gear. Experts say the steering gear is key to safe sailing for a ship, that any problem in the steering gear increases the likelihood of an accident and that ships with steering system problems should be prevented from setting sail. However, Chang Hyejin Marine Company appears to have continued to allow the ill-fated Seoul Ho ferry to operate for more than two weeks, leading up to the accident last week. Park Ji-won, Arirang News. The ferry sinking has been making headlines around the world as the international media attempts to make sense of the tragedy. A number of journalists and publications say Korea's so-called bali bali culture, or pushing things to be done quickly, was not in evidence during the handling of the crisis. They also point to bureaucracy of government agencies as another key factor in the slow response to the disaster. Song ji Son reports. Bloomberg columnist William Pesek thinks the ferry disaster shows the chronic flaws that have existed in Korea for decades. He says the country's rapid economic growth has come at the cost of a prompt response and a quick management system at a time of crisis. Questioning why it took nearly one hour for rescue teams to get to the accident site, Pesek reasoned that Korea's problems trace in part from the collision between its quick quick or pali pali culture and a government that remains obsessed with bureaucracy, hierarchy and turf, 
pointing to Korea's culture of basing high-level appointments on seniority. He also pointed out that Korea's business culture needs a thorough re-examination as ferry operators put lives at risk to boost profits in a hyper-competitive environment. The Financial Times focused on probes being launched into the operator's finances and tax position, while politicians came under fire for insensitive behavior. The British Daily also described thoughtless actions shown by some high-ranking officials, like the education minister eating noodles on a sofa, where hundreds of victims' families were sleeping on the floor at a gymnasium, and a potential Seoul mayor candidate's son depicting the public as uncivilized on his Facebook page. The paper said the family think that if the government had handled the crisis better in the early stages, the damage would not have been as bad. It adds that the parents' only wish right now is to find the sons and daughters' bodies before they're too badly decomposed. Song Ji-sun, Arirang News. With U.S. President Barack Obama having embarked on his Asia tour on this Wednesday, there's been fresh speculation North Korea may attempt to make a statement while he's in the region in the form of a fourth nuclear test. Experts are dubious, but Washington says it's prepared either way. Shin Se-min reports. The U.S. says it is keeping close watch on movements in the North amid speculation that it may carry out a fourth nuclear test while U.S. President Barack Obama is visiting the region over the next week. Speaking to reporters on Air Force One, White House spokesman Jake Carney said the U.S. is monitoring movements at the North Punggye-ri nuclear test site. South Korea's defense ministry had earlier reported detecting increased activity there. The U.S. State Department echoed Carney's sentiment and urged North Korea to exercise restraint. We continue to urge North Korea to refrain from actions that threaten regional peace and security and to comply with its international obligations and commitments. The U.S.-based North Korea analysis site 38 North does not believe the regime will carry out a fourth nuclear test while President Obama is in the region. It said the recent activities detected in satellite imagery of the Punggye-ri nuclear test site are dissimilar to those seen in the weeks before previous detonations and do not suggest a test is imminent. Shin Se-min, Arirang News. Now, on the eve of President Obama's arrival in Tokyo, a group of nearly 150 Japanese lawmakers paid their respects at the controversial Yasukuni War Shrine, where convicted war criminals are laid. The visit by a group of legislators from several parties and at least one cabinet minister to mark an annual spring festival drew strong rebuke from Korea, a country forced under Japanese colonial rule in the early 20th century. Korean Foreign Ministry spokesperson Cho Tae-young described the visit as a deplorable and an act that undermines stability in the region. Japan's Chief Cabinet Secretary Yoshihide Suga said earlier that the visits were an individual ma matter of personal religious freedom and not something the government should interfere with. I'm Lee Ji-hyun with a weather update for Jindo and around the country. As of about an hour ago, the waves in the area of the Seorho accident site were still calm at 0.6 meter and wind are blowing at 1 meter per second with water temperatures at about 11.7 degrees Celsius. And as for the tides go, this is when the weakest tidal currents occur today. The next time of low currents is at about 
3.30 and 8.35 later in the evening. Well, flow velocity should decrease one hour before and one hour after these indicated times. But actually, the speed of tidal currents went down to their slowest since nip tides started yesterday, which should last through Thursday, and it's making a favorable condition for divers. And as for the rest of the country, we can continue to have early summer-like conditions. The high in Seoul will rise to 24 under lots of sunshine, and Jindo can also expect to have moderate conditions under sunny skies. Well, that's all for me today, but Arirang's Weather Center will bring you the latest weather updates throughout the day. Thank you very much, Gion. Those are the latest updates we have for you at this hour, but do stay tuned to Arirang as we continue to bring you the latest on the search and rescue efforts. Our next newscast will be at 2 p.m. Korea time with new developments on the ferry sinking. Thank you for watching.